Hello, hello, good morning, happy Friday. Uh, hello, Stacking. How are you doing today? And hello, Isitsu. Uh, how's both of your weeks? Okay, my chat is getting very, like, cluttered by all these messages about doing other stuff. It wants to send it wants me to send like all sorts of other things which are not relevant. I don't think anybody cares about it. Um but okay. Yeah, I spent um the last three days going into the office uh for my day job doing a design sprint. Which is um if you've never done a design sprint, they are I, I like them a lot. It's um it's great for making sure that projects we work on are like the correct project, um, but also like to make sure that the team sort of understand what that project is. It's it's so easy to um, to build something and like each team that um, is like, oh, wait, why why did we build that? I thought it was gonna be something else. Okay, major game of telephone. Great, not so much done. Not to say that was anything to do with lack of streams in a week. Oh well, I mean, I'm sorry. Um, I'll uh, I'll tr I'll try to stream more so that you can get more done. I know you don't say it's due to that, but I'll I'll still just sort of assume. Clearly, clearly. All right, so I kind of sort of got ready this morning. Uh, let's see. So I pulled in this database is up and running. You're happy. I think I might have some metadata to apply. It. I don't remember anymore. Uh, let's just try to apply it. Okay. So you're happy there. You're up and running. We can run you. Let's do our tests. and find out where we are because it's been a few days. I have to remember which mouse is like the one I wanna actually use for this computer. Um, <laughs> I haven't been down here and used this computer for like the entire week, since Monday really. All right, so, oh, right, I have skips on everything? No, I have an only on some stuff, so it's skipping all these. That's what's going on. Wait. Is that right? Why, why is, why is it, okay, now it's running. Was that like a before? Maybe it was like running befores for everything? That'd be interesting. Ooh, okay. WebKit fails, a learner cannot create an article. WebKit is Safari, right? Great, of course Safari. So, expect page.url not to match Create article. Oh yeah, so go to create article. Oh, route fulfill, timed out. Um, okay, so you're not using a computer for a week. Oh no, I'm not using, yeah, not using a computer for a week. You're not sure what that sentence, sorry. Not using this computer for a week. I used a computer for, for a week. I just didn't use this computer for a week. Okay, okay. So let me show you one of the uh, one of the things that I did over the weekend last weekend that I don't think I introduced on Monday, which was I created a centralized 
a centralized interceptor. So in our end-to-end -end tests, uh, we now have this GraphQL interceptor. I think I sort of kind of almost introduced this, but not really, not really. So it's a single intercept that uh, we get the operation. Okay, so we grab the operation name out of the, the post data. And then based upon the operation name, we return different uh, mock data. So clearly my thought here is the operation name that we're attempting to, uh, to hit here uh, is not working because we're getting it timed out. So can I actually see what we're trying to send? Not really. What is interesting is that everything else is working just fine. Yeah. You're all working just fine with the only authors can create articles. Of course, WebKit. If I run you again, do you work? Oh, so it's a race condition. Okay. Oh, that fulfill worked up here this time, but it takes a while. Interesting, okay. So that that's good to know. Uh, now web, the playwright does suggest that I can like set up a um, a rerun, if if it fails, just have it like rerun one one extra time, two extra times. Uh, we can, I think I can set that up here. So if we go to our playwright config, we could say retries. Okay, so this I believe is retries in case of a fail, and so we can say, okay, try twice. And I think I need to restart the UI. All right, let's try this again. And so now if any of them fail, it should restart them again. Man, it went, it went through everything once. Okay, what what is actually happening in here? Oh, that's what's happening. Okay, so it's doing, it's almost like it did Chrome first, and then it went through and did everything Firefox, and then it's going through and doing everything WebKit. I guess that makes sense because it's loading up the, the browser engine, and that's probably expensive to like constantly swatch out the engines. All right, well, okay, you're, did you retry? When there are always these like can visits too. Okay, let's retry you again. And now you work. So now I'm wondering, is it because you're trying to do too many at the same time? And like there's some weird um, shared memory thing going on? Or if it, is it something else? In CI CD, usually we don't allow parallel test runs. Um, and that was suggestion by playwright in the config by default. 
it's just don't do parallel just run once through because then it's like more accurate i guess it takes longer but at least when we're deploying we you know it gives more accuracy that's that's better also we don't really get that powerful computer so i don't know i don't know on a free tier even if like how many threads i really get Uh, all right, so preview course. Visitor should vis visitors should be able to preview a course. Uh, this is all running. Expect. Um, okay, yeah. So here's what we've got. We've got our uh, title of the course. I moved this up here as opposed to next to the course here, uh, and then I I have our um, I have the articles over on the left. So if we head over to here, let's go ahead and load this up. Uh, we are not logging in. So that's, I think we've been playing with you. Kind of. I don't know if we have any other courses that have information. Actually, you know what the easiest way to find out that would be? Let's go look at the database. All right, so data, I just want actually, get okay, articles, no. We're gonna do a query get um, courses. Okay, Elmas courses, I want the ID, I want the title, I want the article IDs. Okay, so this one has one article, one article, one article. All right, so that one has two articles. This one. There we go. And they're both they're both over here. Okay, great. So when we first launch the course i'm thinking that then we can have like instructions or like you know how how like the course system works so like click on click on an article to the left to start sort of taking it and then we can track if we've started it we can get metrics based on that i don't necessarily i don't know if i want to drop somebody into an article right away um so let's um let's put something like if we haven't chosen something we're gonna go there and so this is courses, okay, I, courses ID four, and then we have access here. So I want course access. Where am I gonna put this? Okay, so we have our title here. Oh, interesting, okay. Oh, right, those are all those are all what I return if I, okay, so this is the articles list on the left. This is what I return if we don't have a course. You are, okay, so we have our container. We have our title and then we have a row. We have two columns, one with the articles and then the other row is completely empty. So we can do title. Uh, we probably want to center a line inside of here. I like how it doesn't want to give me any help. And I think I think that's because I'm not closed the title. I think I need to like close you. I don't know if that will work yet though. Uh okay, so we already have a one, so this has to be at the 
at the best, at the biggest, it's going to only be a two. So I close you. All right, next test. Um, so select an article. Okay, so it I have to like have have to have legal HTML or like a, I guess like an XML um for it to like give me help. It's not great. All right, select an article. That is really close to there. I might want to change the size of an H1 to an H2 uh to make them slightly more obvious. Okay, so let's um if I have that, let's do let's do our BB text. All right, what should we put in here? I think it's gonna be just basic instructions. Click an article to the left to load um, to load it. Uh, we can put more information there later if we want to. All right. Click an article on the left to load it. Great. So then I click on Y Rust. That takes me to a different URL. Uh, so in this might be a case for a nested router too. I wonder about that. I don't know if, can we do nested routers in you? Ooh, yeah, okay. So I can do a nested router. The nested settings router, this one here, handles all URLs that start with settings. Additionally, it redirects URLs that are not matched. Okay, so yeah, I can I can totally do that. So that might be perfect. It can be implemented, so I have our main route. Oh, and then we have a completely separate enum for the settings route. Okay, okay. So we have to have multiple switch. So I probably just have another, do I have another browser router or just another switch? I would imagine I only have just another switch. I don't think I need another browser router again. Uh, I probably would not be. Oh yeah, yeah, right here. Okay, switch. Okay, so we just have another switch. There we go. So let's set that up really quickly. Um, I need, let's see if we go to routes, router. So here's our, enum routes, let's create a new one. We have a pub enum, this is gonna be our course routes, our access routes. Maybe I'll do course access routes. Okay, so we can do an at. Now I don't, I don't know if I necessarily want a slash, but maybe I do need a slash. And this, I mean, this could be kind of home at the same time. So like this is home for 
is home for the course access routes. Now, course access article would be, this is the one I care about here. And now this is gonna be coming into courses, we have the course ID, and then access, and then okay, so I just care about the article ID at this point. Is that true? I wonder if I don't want, I don't really want that. So maybe I just want colon, this is gonna be the ID, which is gonna be the article ID. I need, so I need the course ID, but I have that here. I guess, the, okay, I guess this is how it's. Passed in. So here I want, okay, so course ID access, and then I don't want you to be in here. So you just know about the course ID and then the nested route we have the article ID that goes sort of along here. So this would be, I guess, like um, course access. Okay, so you'll be in I-64, um, you won't have this article ID, and then, now course access article, right, oh, Okay, so this goes to course access, so we don't need you at all. You go away. We need a new switch. So this is gonna be a switch, course access. Routes is, this is gonna be course access routes. Okay, so we've taken the article ID. We know that's an I64, so we're gonna turn HTML. And so this is going to be that course access routes. Uh, oh, wait, maybe it's course access article. Course access article. We have the course ID. All right, so that we need the course ID here. Um, and we need the article ID. Okay, so you absolutely need it. Uh, so that makes it a little bit tougher. 
So we have article ID, course ID, which means you need course ID, which is an I-64. All right. Oh, and then, okay, you can only have it in here. Well, that, okay. So that. So then the sub route isn't in here. The sub route needs to be one level higher because I don't have the course ID here. Uh, I have, I have it here. Uh, so that's not really going to work the way I was hoping it would work. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna undo this and leave it leave it the way I have it for now until I figure out a better way to do this. All right, so you're still working. You should still be fine, right? So if I load you, no errors, no errors. Yeah, okay, perfect. I need to find out where I left some logs and get rid of those. Okay, so um, that's great there. So then we have the course, the course access article. Okay, right. So course access article here. Um, Togglebit rating with a party of 167. Welcome, 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 Togglebit. Um, welcome, Raiders. You're so sorry? Well, I mean, thank you. I mean, no, oh, terrible, terrible. Um, hello, everybody. Hello, I am Hardliner. Uh, RJ, uh, Dag Lee, Diablo D3. Uh, Glam Shatter Skull, Smiling Big, uh, Goat Dog, Raid and Run also. Well, hopefully you had a great stream and uh, have a good rest of your day. Opus Mag, um, Epic, Epic Blark. Oh, it's a... Uh, um, well, thank you for the, uh, the happy affiliate anniversary. I guess it is that. I've been getting messages about that from, from Twitch and then I didn't schedule like a, hey, let's celebrate that. I didn't really think anybody would care. But uh, thank you for the uh, the the message. Um, uh, I am hard. Have I been flushing my beavers recently? No, I haven't really been flushing my beavers. Um, I think they're just all running around, building dams everywhere. Um, oh, Toggle's chat has come to the conclusion that JavaScript comes from beaver butts. I mean that like that's. Probably as good of a uh, uh, assumption as ever. So let's let's just go with it, right? Um, Beef Supreme, hello. Uh, damn, damn them! Like, well, the problem is they're the ones creating the dams, right? Because they're beavers. Vanilla doesn't exist. It's okay. Um, all right. Well, everybody, hello, hello, welcome. Uh, I guess I don't get to ask. Uh, toggle how how he was working, um, what he was working on, how that was going. Uh, was it more keyboard stuff? Um, but in the meantime, what am I working on? So I'm working on a Rust LMS. So it's a learning management system built in Rust. We're using u.rs as the front end. Um, I'm using uh, a GraphQL API as the back end, which I didn't write. I am using something called Hasura. Uh, and so we can see that running here. And so that's running on top of a Postgres database. Um, I, I see, I see. We're uh, very, very high quality then. But of course, if we're talking about JavaScript, I mean, we can't control what type of chat we have, right? Um, so uh, this is what the LMS looks like right now. So if we we log in, we uh we hang out here. We don't really have anything to do yet. Um, 
I mean, you could join Discord. That that's fine. Uh, but if we don't even want to log in or check anything out, we can go look at the courses. Uh, ironically, the course that has no sensical name is the one that has the most articles on it. Uh, we come into here. Uh, sure, we can pre let's preview it. Um, we can see, okay, here's a list of articles that we have. Let's go into the articles. Uh, and then we have nothing here because this is what we're working on right now. Um, I am Hardliner with uh, five one tier subs. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I am Hardliner. And welcome um, uh, back, Epic Blarg, Stacking, uh, Tia Sutton, Extrapol, uh, and Namaz. Thank you again so much, Epic Blarg, and uh, welcome to the community. Um, all right, so technology that we're using. So we have, um, we have you. So if you're familiar with web development and you've used React ever, uh, it's pretty much like you're 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 already there. If you know like any amount of Rust, uh, you can go ahead and get started with that. As long as you know a little tiny bit of React, you won't really need any any support. You're you're good to go pretty much. Um, let's uh, switch over and take a look at the code. Uh, just a sort of heads up, I am using uh, Helix and Zellage here. So I mean the the trinity of um of brand new technologies. We have Alacrity as the uh the terminal, we have Zellage which is my um uh, it's basically replacing Tmux for me. Uh so my uh, my window layout is all Zellage and then uh Helix is my editor here. Uh and so far everything has been working out really great. Well, thank you, I am Hardliner, for for that. Um, I'm sure you're you're talented too. I've I've seen some of your your stuff. Um, I don't think you've you you streamed for a while, but I don't think I've seen you in a long in a long time online, right? Because you made some you made some you made some cool stuff. Um, all right, so. We are creating the course access article function here, or component here, which is this one right here. So it's gonna be between our header and our footer. This is gonna show off like for this course, for this article. Now let's like, we actually wanna display it out. I wanna figure out a good way to do nesting articles so I don't have to redo the, uh, the article list again, cause like that's clearly, it's clearly an issue and not something that's great. Um, nothing that's nearly as beautiful as this. Well, thank you. I am hard, I am a hardliner. I did I did work with a designer uh, before I started building this. So a designer did help me. I uh, actually created some CSS for me to sort of get started with. Um, and then we actually designed everything of like, okay, this is what like the wireframes, what it's going to work with. So kind of, kind of figured it out. Um, you're trying Helix for a week, but it was really hard to integrate existing ecosystems or multiple formatters into it. Are you talking about like multiple formatters for the same, the same like language or multiple formatters for like different languages? Uh, because it's, if it's for the multiple languages, then I got it working. Um, and it is, it was not fun. Oh, actually it's not here. It's over in dot files. So in Helix, okay. ESLint and prettier. All right. So I've, I've got, I've got it. Uh, if we go to languages, this is what got it working for me. So what I found and the documentation is like okay on this, but not really great. And then blog posts that sort of like are trying to help were no help at all. Uh, they were telling me to do stuff that just didn't work. So uh, what I have to have is like, okay, we have this like language section. Okay, so I set up language Rust. I'm using Clippy for this. If we go down here to JavaScript, uh, I have my formatter. And they were recommending that you do something like this, where it's a uh, language dot formatter. Um, this didn't work. Uh, it would actually causing the for the the formatter try to run on like everything. 
Uh, so what I can do here is formatter, and then I can have this object, and now it just works the way we expect it to. So I can have command, have it run prettier, um, have it run that. I have down here language. Um, what was my other thing? I I guess I don't have es lint on here, but that wouldn't be the formatter. That would be something else. But okay, that's I think how it's um, how it's working. Oh yeah, the documentation is absolutely awful. Zealot does not compile on your um, X Ubuntu virtual machine. Oh no, that's too. That's that. That's not good. It is brand new. Like this, these are new technologies. So like, I'm not too surprised that there's some trouble getting it to working on everything yet. I'm Hardliner. Thank you again for the gifted subs, and uh, have a great rest of your day. So, anyways, this this worked for me. Um, Uh, so this works for me, Michael, uh, and then um, hopefully it's helpful to sort of like see that this is what I need to do. The specific thing is if I needed to access things inside of here, like three levels in, I just do like config dot and then just access it directly in there. Uh, I don't have to do the multiple levels of whatever that thing is. I never really learned Tommel that much, just enough, just the basics to like get things going. That's the thing, it's not something else. I can only set up one of them. I've been searching GitHub issues all day and everyone was stuck on, oh no, okay. So uh, I wonder if I could try, like instead of a formatter, if there's like something else to do and then I can put it inside of here, which would be nice. Off the, off the, think about that. Okay, so we want ESLint and we want that. Okay, so I'll add that to my to-do list to sort of check out, but if it's an update thing, then obviously I won't be able to get to it either. Um, what it looks like, don't bother to stick to rest. Well, so the project that I'm running, I, I want to do some kind of testing, right? And Rust doesn't have any great GUI end-to-end -end testing libraries yet, so I'm using Playwright. And Playwright uh, means I'm using TypeScript. So if we head over to my end-to-end -end tests, uh, for example, our preview, this is what that looks like, is we have some TypeScript here where I pull in um, a page and then I can just run stuff. It's a very, very, very simple TypeScript. I don't really have to do that much to it, um, but uh, Prettier is running for it and so I'm, I'm happy enough with that. Um, I guess I want to figure out, okay, so you were saying expect get by roll, okay, so link how to learn, oh, okay, so oh, this is, I start on slash, I get the courses, so I find the courses and I click that, and then I find you and I click that, then I find preview and I click that. I expect this to be in the access page. I expect to see introduction to you. Like so I expect to see the title of the course in there. Uh, and then I expect to see the link how to learn to be visible. Okay, so then I think the next thing is I ex want to click that. So let's do an await page. Now, if it's the same exact one, let's let's combine these together. So I want const. This is going to be the, I guess, how to learn. For any of you using Alacrity, uh, how are you liking it? Oh, sorry, not Alacrity. Um, Helix. For any of you using Helix, how are you liking it? It takes a little bit of while to get used to the uh, the types, like the commands, and I, I keep on doing the wrong things and sort of like getting out there, but in general, I like it. Okay, so then 
once I have that, I now want to await expect how to learn link to be visible. Okay. And then I want to click it. So wait, how to learn link. We click you. I guess then I'm going to expect, wait. Oh, I don't have to wait. I expect page.url to match and then regular expression time. So when I'm here, okay, so I have like courses and then a number and then access and then a number. So I think in this case, it's going to be course number one. I think it's going to be that. So that's you and then one, I think so. Find out. Uh, Twisted Seed, hello. You love the help context windows. Uh, some shortcuts are much better than Vim, but some matching are worse. Uh, yeah, I can see that. There's there there's definitely some things about it that are like, okay, this is this is worse and needs a lot more work. Um, the the help context. So like for example, if I press space, I get this um help window here. Um, there's there's also a lot of things where it does stuff, but like it's really hard to like discover that it can do that thing unless you like explicitly go looking for it. So something that like was really nice um, to eventually learn. Okay, so if I want to put brackets around this to match, for example, I have to do M and then S and then, then I can do brackets around it, which it uh, took, took a lot longer for me to learn. I still haven't like internalized it yet. So I'm, I'm very slow with it still. But at least, at least I'm getting there. I'm not, I'm not always constantly deleting random stuff or selecting everything every time I want to like delete a character. Which does happen every once in a while though. Uh, See, so yeah, if you just see like random weird stuff happen, it's because, it's because of that. Um, do I manually set up the uh, Zellige terminal locations? Yes. Okay, so if we come over here in the Zellige layouts here, um, I do, oh, it's, uh, it won't. See, it's one thing that Zellige layouts don't let me do, which is kind of not fun. So I need to go to config Zellige layouts here, and then we can take a look at it. Uh, so if I bat default, ADL, this is what the layout looks like for me. Uh, so I manually set this up. So I say, okay, my default tab layout, uh, this top one is these things. So I get like the help tab and then it also gives me this down here. So it's uh, set up a template for everything where I just have like a size one pane that gives me those things. Um, and then I have, okay, my dot files is right here. And that gives me three panes. So that's a three right here. I have this YCL. Um, and then I have my LMS pane. So you can see I have two panes. And then inside the second pane, I have three more panes. So that's, that's how I set that up. Now, the problem is I can set a current working directory, but I can't yet set a, um, I can't use like an environment variable inside of there. So I, it, it's to my other profile. So it doesn't like, it's not helpful because in this profile that I use for streaming, it uh, is not really taking me to where I really want to go. So I can't actually do anything in there, which kind of sucks. Um, but it does, Alacrity does like allow my mouse to go in so I can click on these and that, that works. Um, Kitschbisoff, hello. Um, Helix is good beside coloring, but you can fix it yourself rather uh, later upstream. The key binds are better and the performance is better compared to NVIM for me. I've got some things that are performance better. The, uh, 
I, I feel that my initial load time for uh, Rust Analyzer is really bad, like VS Code bad. And But then once it's going, it's really fast. It just takes a little bit of time to go there. And then I think what I really love about um, Helix is that my... Let's come in here to... This is the entire config, like in, in NeoVim or Vim or anything like any of those other text editors, I need to have like hundreds of lines of configs and this is it. The drawback for you with Helix is learning Helix. I totally fair. Absolutely. It's, it's a very different um, key set. Uh, so it, it can absolutely sort of, I, I can see that I can, I, I can see it making like a little bit of trouble to getting used to it. Like for example, X is select the entire line by default. And like, yes, you can go and change every single character to be whatever you want, but that's not, I don't, I don't recommend that. I don't think that's a good idea. Okay. You weren't testing, um, LSP loading. Yeah, LSP loading is like essential if we want to actually do any real work with it. Um, and it, yeah, it just takes a little bit of time, but I think the big thing here is these two. In display inline hints true. And that gives us, that gives me those types that you see injected in that are just like VS Code. It's amazing. It's instant on the Alacrity code base. Oh, that's really nice. Uh, it's the same separate process. It will always take the same amount of time in any editor. For some reason, I felt that NeoVim was faster, but I think it was also doing less, maybe. Um, all right, sorry about that. Let me see, what was that link? Wait, okay, no, that was that was an appropriate delete. You're not allowed to do links. It's crazy how LSP was developed in uh, 2015. Uh, things have been moving, like think things have been getting so good, uh, developer wise. I, it does feel that way. I I remember. I remember when I was a system in, it was just like, okay, I've got my text editor. I've got, I've got Vim and I don't need plugins. What, what good are plugins for me? And, uh, it just did, um, vanilla Vim for like eight years because like no LSP type thing. But if I had that back then, that would have been amazing. All right. Okay, so where was I? This was this was the test. Okay, so I wrote this. And we're verifying that we're in this access one. Uh, and so to run the test, we have a visual indicator of playwright. If you've ever used something like Cypress before or Selenium, it's exactly like that, except better, in my opinion. First of all, by default, playwright pulls in uh, three major engines for uh, for this. So I think this is the one. I think it's visitor should preview the course. Is that it? Yeah. So I could just run Firefox, for example, again, or I can run all three. All right, so this uh, failed. Oh, it's because I'm on two on this one. Okay, fine. Fine, so your two. And we can just set this to rerun this every time the code changes. So I won't have to click that play button again, just for Firefox. There we go, okay. So the URL matches and we have that there. Okay, and so we're on this page. So when we're on this page again, uh, what do I expect to see? I expect to see the list of articles on the left again. So um, the list of articles on the left. Well, if I go back in time, there's only one article that we have here, which is this how to learn article. So um, I guess like I'm, I'm 
I still like I'm getting used to the playwright method of doing something. I don't actually think I care to see it because I'm trying to think about from the from the point of view of a learner going through this course, or in this case, someone previewing the course in order to like determine whether or not they want to take it. If they've clicked on it, they don't really care that that's there. They only care about the actual article that they can see. They want to see the contents of the article. So this how to learn. We've been using Puppeteer in Cyprus, and you can confidently say that Playwright is the best. It Playwright is I. It's it's taken me a while to get to the point this point, but I would say that Playwright is probably going to overtake Cyprus in, I mean, not just functionality, but in popularity. If they continue doing what they're doing, and Cyprus doesn't do anything to to stop. Just like I guess they can't do anything to stop it unless they do something to like catch back up again. All right, so I want to check to see if there's like a title or something that we can get. Um, now, the way that my articles work, if we take a look at the database, uh, get articles. Okay, so I have ID title created at and then our content. What's what's in here? So we have Oh, interesting. Okay. So if I'm if I'm not logged as anybody, I don't get the content. But if I'm logged in as root, I can see the content and we can see, all right. It's it's basically going to be just a big string of markdown and I want to render that. But this is a problem. Uh, a not logged in user will not be able to see it. Right, which is why, okay, why I need to be able to get if an article is a preview or not. If it's preview, then I need to be able to get the content. The generator engine, or um, how would you describe the mechanism of Cypress, is really not good for writing and designing test cases. It's very much like the next step in like it, it basically took like Mocha and Chai, it, from from my understanding, and it just basically just like okay, uh, Mocha and Chai, but then the rest of it is kind of sort of like um, Selenium, like those old tests. And so in, in that case, like it's infinitely better than Selenium. Um, but it's also kind of like cheating because it's not really JavaScript because it's asynchronous, but not asynchronous and weird things are happening. And so it's, um, you can't do async await because it's not JavaScript. I think that's, that's the big, the big cheat lie in Cypress is it's not actually JavaScript. It's pretending to be JavaScript. So it's, yeah, it's a thing. It's, it's, it's definitely a thing. Um, whereas here in Playwright, it absolutely is JavaScript or TypeScript in this case, but you can choose whichever one you want. Okay, so um, I need, okay, so my testing is sort of ignoring the database sort of system of this. So we can go ahead and just ignore that and just pretend if we're gonna get this, we're gonna be able to get content here and our content is gonna be markdown. Okay, so let's, let's go create some markdown. Uh, I want to do that in, Uh, our end-to-end -end test, end-to-end -to -end test on our GraphQL interceptor. This is Alma's course articles that, oh, that's a set. Okay, so okay, get it by ID.
And then I want content here. Uh, and content is going to, oh, I don't think I can do that. That's a JavaScript thing. So, so if I do like, um, this is my course. Who double, double, single one will probably not make Lighthouse happy. So if I do something like that, okay, so like this is my course, and then we just have like, uh, I guess it's two new lines usually after that, and then um, hello world. So if I do something like that, I should be able to have I should see this is my course as an H1 without that hash. And then I want to see also hello world. All right, so I've saved this. Where's my test? That one. Okay, so I expect to see Oh, it's going to have to be in a wait. Page, uh, get by, okay, so get by text. I kind of want to just see like, hello world, right? I just want to see that there to be visible. And if we come back to here, we should have, okay, that's going to auto rerun. Okay, yeah, so it's attempting to get this text and it can't find it at all. Uh, if we take a look at this fulfill here. I can also maybe get this, this is my course header. That might be another good one to get. So let's do await, expect, page, we're gonna get by role. Uh, this is, I want a heading, I want the name to be that, I want that to be to be visible. Okay, so I want those two things. They see the title of this, and they see the hello world. Um, Steven, hello. Uh, thank you very much. How are you doing today? Uh, how was your week? All right, so you're looking for the heading now? Get by roll heading, name that, and you can't find it. Okay, great. So next up, I'm in preview mode, so I need to get the content sometimes. Cause that's that's gonna be the clear the clear thing here is, well, when I get to this page, I need the content. If I don't have the content, I can't be on this page. So we're doing a query so that we're doing a query for the article at a time, I think, maybe, possibly. I know I'm doing the query for the course, and we're getting all those. Then I'm getting the article titles. Oh, I'm just getting the titles for the article. And now I want to get the content for the article. Okay. So I want to get the content for the article. So the way the way this is working here, if we take a look at database, uh, so I'm using GraphQL here, and so I have all my queries sort of set up for how I want to do stuff. So I want to get, I want to get an like a full article now. So instead of just like get article titles, this is gonna be like get an article.
Now I'm not logged in. So what are my choices here? Because later on I'm going to be logged in and I can say like, hey, I'm a learner. This is this is like my token and, and other stuff there. So I think I think maybe I want to do like get get an article like preview and have that be a different what are my choices so this is where I don't really know how I'm going to do this I just know that it's possible technically uh, if we take a look into my articles here so I want to be able to get this content uh, permission set. So Hasura gives me a pretty rich permission set here, which I'm not fully familiar with. I want to be able to do a select as public here. Currently, I'm only allowed to get the title, the ID, and then the created at. I want to allow content, but with checks. So like, with custom checks. Okay, let me have content. Oh, so interesting though. So I can say, I can have content, but only if, the same on both. It doesn't matter where I click. Oh, it's probably not content, right? Oh, so I think what I want to do is I want to have, I want to have the article, the article is going to have to have like a preview true or false. If, if I have a preview on it and that's like allowed as a Boolean, then we can get content as, as a public user, or at least if I don't own the course. Ooh, okay. So I don't think we have that. So here's the schema. So I'm in How do we go back to just look at? There. Yeah, so I don't have anything here for that. I need to, I need to have like another row on here that's gonna be for like preview, true or false. Like is this, is this something that, that is previewable? Okay. So to that end, I, we're going to come back to Alacrity. Okay, so not data. We need, oh, not even go there. I need to go, no, not there. Database. It's full screen you. Uh, I want to go to, okay, so this is migrations. And articles, metadata, do I have preview? So migration preview, oh, I don't think I have preview. Okay, uh, Sura, we have migrations. Create LMS courses. Okay, so I think I wanna create a new I think I want to create a new migration here. Uh, excuse me. Okay, so we're going to do, I have the Hasura um, CLI installed, so we can do Hasura um, migrate create. Um, and then it's going to be the name of it. So this is going to be add preview to articles. Okay, on default. 
Okay, so that goes there, and now I should be able to helix add preview to articles. Okay, it gives me an up and a down. All right, so then this is just pure SQL. Uh, okay, so for SQL, I don't have any SQL stuff in um, for Helix, so this is not going to help me about very much. Um, let's see. I want to add a. I want to add a column to it. So I think it's alter table. Oh, you know a little bit about SQL. Alter table. LMS articles, right? Is that correct? Yeah, LMS articles. Add column. Uh, thinking preview. And then the column type, which is going to be a Boolean. Uh, we're going to say default false. Semicolon. I think that's it. I think that's all I need here. Okay, so that's you. So if I yank you, let's. I want the um, add preview. Let's go to down. Okay, so alter table. This becomes a drop column that and then we don't care about any okay so then if i run this so we're going to do um asura migrate apply Okay, and let's take a look here. If I hit refresh, I did not like that. Um, no such column exists. Pre oh, previews here, kind of. Um, did I do that right? I did that to. Okay, so you're on LMS articles preview. Do I need to reset the metadata? Asura metadata apply. Okay, you're you're happy again. So here's this preview. Everything is false. And so I need if you don't have permissions, so if you're public. I want you to be able to select uh, without checks preview. So scan. This is going to be in. Oh, I'm an LMS. No, I'm in database. Okay. Uh, metadata LMS articles. Okay. So that's an author. Okay. Here's public. Your uh, ID title created out. Okay, so preview. Okay, so you're allowed to get everything with preview. And then this filter, I think, is where we're going to put in that we can get the content, I, I think. Which is going to be interesting. So I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work. OK, so if I save you, let's quit out again. Let's apply your metadata again. OK, so now public can access that so I can come back to the API. So there's a preview. So get articles. But I can turn off. How did I? How did I like lose that? Oh, I'm I'm too zoomed in. That's that's the problem. Okay, so if I remove our our secret key, this is as if we're not logged in at all. 
uh, we can't get this because, hey, there's no content here. You, you don't even have access to that. Uh, but I can get preview. So we can say, okay, you're all preview false. So I want to go in and set, oh, I'm not going to be able to update those. Almost articles. Let's go to change some to true. I don't remember which articles we've associated with one of these courses. Okay, course, that one, preview. Why rest and uh, tau is, okay. Um, why rest and this one, so one and three. So I want, okay, I need to make this smaller. Oh, right, to update these, I just update you, your preview is now gonna be true, save that. And so that's why Rust and then that one, true. Okay. I uh, get articles, okay, so run you again, we can see true, true, okay. I'm not sorting these, they're sort of coming back in a weird order, but I could I could have the database, I could do a um, an order by on it, so it orders by the created at date. Uh, wonder, wonder if I can control the order a little bit better. I don't know if it matters that much. Um, Londa Spark uh, resubscribed um, for 13 months. Uh, Baker's a baker's dozen, definitely. Yeah, definitely a baker's year, absolutely. And thank you also for the uh, the happy affiliate uh, anniversary. Um, also, Londa, how are you doing? Uh, okay, so get articles, get courses. Okay, so I have this now. So we have our preview. I want to... So a design, a design consideration. Let's, let's head back into here. So I have these two articles available here for this course. Right, let's let's go and log in as an author. Uh, okay, so I can do want courses that one course articles. Let's add in all of these articles. So we have all four. And so if I log out again, I see all four articles, but I should only be able to load two of them because two of them are preview. So I need some way to know that it's preview, don't I? Or rather, probably better yet, I need some way to know that I can't click on the other ones. I need them to be to be blocked. That's the next step. Okay. So I, I need some test here. So in our end end test, that's uh, I'm already here. So we come here. So the way that the way that playwright works is we want to think of it as like actions that the user is doing and we're testing those and I'm not testing like how the 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 web app looks uh, or feels. I'm really just testing like hey does it work? So does it work in the, in the same exact way that like a user would use this? So um okay, so I get to this I get to the preview page of the course U.
I expect to see the name of the course, okay, and then I find the links on the left. I want to look at the links and I want to see the ones that have preview on it. And I'm thinking that if you're not logged in, we should have like probably a little preview thing near it to let you know that you can preview to preview the uh, the course. So that makes sense to me is like having a little bit of a preview thing here. Uh, KO2 fan, hello, and thank you so much. How are you doing today? So I want to get maybe, okay, so we're going to get how to learn link, how to learn. Let's say for this test, because I'm intercepting the data, so it's not exactly the same as the one I have in like my database, so it could be faster testing and uh, you know, other other fun things. Let's say I I want to get the link that includes the name preview. And this should be preview links then. All right, so expect how to learn links visible. All right, so next next thing in Helix that I really like here is multiple. So I can do select all these links, we do a search in here. So how to learn link. I want to change these to be preview links. Um, KO2 fan uh, subscribed uh, with Prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for KO2 fan. And uh, five months already. Um, well, uh, thank you again for, for the uh, subscription. All right, so preview links. I expect to find that the preview links are visible and then I want to click maybe like the first one. So preview links dot first, and then I click that. So if we do that and then back to you, you're probably gonna fail, right? Yeah, okay, so it expected Expected preview links to be visible after we found this, but it can't find any because there's no there's no preview in here. That's the thing we got to work on. Is we have to add a preview in here for that. All right. So, uh, I would love to uh, to work on this right now, but unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go before we do it. We've identified what we need to do. So let me go ahead and uh, get commit these so I don't forget what we're working on. Uh, so I've worked on the database and I've worked in here. So, uh, so, all right. So in here we have um, about to get, I get about to test Clicking on preview articles. All right, I'll push that up. And then our database here, uh, we have some new things. Get status. Okay, so it's just those migrations. So we have git, commit, and then for the migrations, we what do we do? We are adding preview. Uh, uh, flag to the articles. All right, and I'll push those up too. Okay, so those are both up. Um, I push them up like at the end of each session because I'm potentially working on this after streams. And if I do, I do it on a different profile and I try not to give myself really bad um, uh, merge conflicts, but who knows, maybe I, I do every once in a while. It's, it's fun. Okay, 
So that being said, those are up. I haven't forgotten those. Let's see. Um, who is, is there anybody streaming? Um, let's see. So Windy Beard Games is streaming, doing some game dev. Uh, I think that's in Unity though, so that's not it's not Rust. Oh, it's very art. It's art right now. Um, let's see. Everybody else that I'm following is not live. Uh, anybody we should raid? I don't have any like Rust programmers that I'm following right now that are that are live, so I don't necessarily know a good a good raid target um can i hang on for five minutes sure yeah we can hang on for five minutes um you're about to learn leptos oh oh londo you're about to go live oh absolutely yeah i can i can we can hang out for five more minutes and then we'll uh we'll raid you and you're doing Leptos? Nice. Uh, yeah, so Leptos is an alternative to you. So if we've been taking a look at uh, you so far, um, to, uh, which article do I want to go with? Um, one of, so do source, I guess. Um, oh, this is one of the APIs. I want maybe like one of the pages. Uh, article, sure. Doesn't matter which ones. Um. All right, Londo, am I? I am. I am following you, right? Oh yeah, I'm absolutely following you. All right, I'll keep it. I'll keep an eye on my, my Twitch. Let 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 uh let us know when you're when you're up and running. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Leptos is gonna be very different because it's a slightly different sort of paradigm of programming you is very similar to react so if uh, if you're familiar like i mentioned before if you're familiar with react you is going to be like exactly the same thing so here i have um i i almost exclusively use function components in in you and kind of the same thing in react these days and uh it's like looks exactly the same so we have a function component here I just do have to tell it like, hey, you're a function component. Um, the styled component here is a way for me to do CSS in Rust, which basically gives me exactly the same abilities that we have in React or in Vue uh, after we you know, add in the CSS and Rust um, uh, libraries. Sorry, CSS and JS libraries. Uh, the nice thing is because there's no class in Rust, I don't have to have the same JSX problem where I do classes or like some weird, like not, I can't use like the HTML the way it act actually is. It just works the way we want it to work. Uh, and it, 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 it exists. And we see that here. So I, I think I used it a little bit. We have the HTML macro and that lets me do HTML inside of Rust. So it's perfect. Um, I also have the ability to have callback functions that we sent in and an event system. So if if you're using this, and this is a pattern, I haven't really played around with it too much with React, but I kind of like want to experiment with it now. Uh, and it, it's something that I get from Vue and then Angular a lot better than I get in React, which is the ability to have a component that is fully isolated from its parent, as in it doesn't care if the parent is listening to it or not, where it, like in React, it's like, okay, you're gonna pass me a callback and you really have to pass me a callback. I need to know exactly what that is and then I will pass you up something and then you're gonna handle that, deal with it. And that's how you can pass things to the parent. And then obviously properties for passing down to children. Here, I'm able to define in my properties list, 
Where is, oh, this component, of course, doesn't have properties. Let's go find one that has properties. Uh, let's do pages. Um, let's do preview. Oh, it, it's access. That's what it is. Uh, course access article. There we go. Uh, I haven't really done anything in here. Let's do course access that one. Uh, so I have my, well, this one doesn't actually take in. Fine. Let's do pages. What do I have that like actually takes in a callback function? Not you, not you, not you. And you know what? I don't really have anything in this project that does that. Oh, you know what I have? I have it in my uh, YCL. That's what it is. So this stands for U Component Library, which I didn't even start using uh, in here today. Um, but if we open you up, let's go to like element, oh, maybe like a form. A form would be perfect. Oh, a button. There we go. So here's my properties. I take in a callback. So on click, I have this callback. Uh, so if you're clicked, I want to emit out an event that something happened. Now I don't emit like anything in there. It's just an empty, an empty type. Um, but something that I can do that I haven't really noticed that I could do in, I haven't like tried this in React. And I really kind of like want to see if I can. I have this proper default meaning that I don't have to pass in an on click uh, um, property to the component for it to work, uh, meaning that I can define when I'm creating the button, okay, this is the callback that's coming in and this is what I'm gonna send out and if you're not listening to it, I don't really care at all. Uh, and so therefore I've separated out the, the parent and the child now don't actually care about each other. Uh, I'm yeah. As a child, I'm just going to I'm just going to send this out into the ether, and if you're listening to it, great. And if you're not, I don't really care. Uh, I'm just going to still send it out anyways. And I think that is huge for um, being able to like create reusable components that you can pass from you know all around your different applications and just use however you really want. They don't they don't have to really sort of like understand exactly how the parent works. So that's that's something good. Hey, Zilby. Hi. You want to say hi? Camera's a little bit close to you now. I have to rearrange. Oh, no, you want to hang out over here? Okay, here. Nope. Wait. Um. All right, well, Zilby's programming for us now. Uh, you want to come down here? Maybe? All right. Thank you for that, Zilby, but no thank you. And I guess bye. All right. Londo, how is it going? Are you? Uh, it doesn't see you there yet. I'm going to go directly to your channel. Um, anyways, uh, while we're waiting, any questions about uh, web development and Rust, um, you specifically, or basically Rust at all? And I'll be happy to answer. Okay, Londo is running. It's uh, just not showing up on my list. Okay, cool. So we can set up the uh, raid as soon as advertisements are done. 
Uh, so let me go ahead and set that up now. I want to go to Londo Spark. Okay, start the raid. Perfect. All right, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out. If you stayed with the raid from Togglebit, um, we're out. We're all going to go and say hi to Londo. Londo is a community member, um, obviously, who is here and uh, is going to learn Leptos, which is an alternative uh, front-end framework in Rust than you. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how that works, but um, I, I heard that it's like it's really nice. Uh, and it's like the new that one of the new hotness is that's that's great. Um, I will be back tomorrow morning sometime between 7 and 9 a.m. Mountain Time uh, to do a longer stream uh, continuing to work on this project. So with that, I hope that you all have a great rest of your day and uh, I will see you uh, next time. Thanks and bye.